Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. This episode, I'm following up a little bit on the Fabricator Mini. Um, trying to get it set up. I'll pull back here a little bit and I'm um, trying to do this by hand. So I've had a few challenges in setting this up, and I want to talk about this a second in case anybody else gets this. So I've actually tried connecting the printer to a couple different computers um, that I that I that I do use and have used for other 3D printers, and they have not worked, and uh, which was a little bit concerning for me at first. However, after messing around with it a little bit. Um, what I did is actually on this this Windows. This is a Windows XP netbook, which I I use, you know, in short, as a, a print as, as a as a repetier server. Um, yeah, I think they would be on the server side, and, and to run um, a three D printer. Uh, when I connected it, it 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 loaded um, a UART driver. It needed to load a UR driver from the internet, and then it also had to install a port, which became port 8. Now, I've got the Arduino software and everything loaded on here, so I, I'm a little bit puzzled why it needed to do that. So there's there's something in this board. Uh, apparently, um, they're using some kind of... Th th this isn't a, a typical Arduino-type board. So there's some kind of UART that loads, and in short, a UART is a universal asynchronous receive transmitter. Um, and so what it does is converts uh, serial to parallel, and then you know there's a port which is created on top of it. And so uh, it was actually very strange because I expected, and, and I don't see anything really in the instructions uh, about uh, about it because it just jumps to. You know, if we look at the book over here, it just jumps to the configuration of the the ports and, you know, installing the software. Um, sorry for the glare. You know, again, nothing that one would expect that's um, uh, different. And it, and it just shows downloading the Repetier software. And so, uh, again, and it, this is the most current version of, of Repetier. Um, yeah, well, maybe it might not be the most current. It's it's one dot six, but I did on my other PC have the most current version because I actually downloaded it and reinstalled it, and um, it wouldn't work either. So it, this was rather odd, but I do have it working now. So which leads me to a, another problem that I had, and hopefully you can see it back in here. And my fat finger is pointing at it. Is this limit switch is. Um, for the for the y-axis wasn't making contact with the head so it was just grinding repeatedly and I had to turn it off so what I had to do is I took a pair of let me see if I can get these in frame uh, pliers like this to actually reach inside because one of the things uh, it's kind of odd you know odd trying to get your fingers in there is reach in here and then I held pressure back and, and bent the the metal portion of the switch forward a little bit now be careful because this is only, uh, I've ran into this problem on the Wanho with this very similar switch. These are just kind of stuck in the back here so you will break this off if you mess with it and it's going to be a pain in the butt trying to fix this. So I just held a little bit of pressure, uh, let's see if I can get it back on here where my finger is, and then use those pliers to bend it forward while I had the, the hot end to move forward. So that seemed to work and, and now and when I issue a G28 um, you, you, you can see it hit against it and it works just fine now so um, that was good so uh, everything seems to be working somewhat well now one of the situations I ran into this is um, is this over here so one of the things that I want to do is run Octoprint uh, and have it run this and, and for some odd reason it shows it connecting uh, however, it doesn't do anything, and that's why I went through the, through uh, actually three, I think three different machines, and had uh, the problems I did until until I finally uh, got one to load the UR driver, and then it started working. So again, I find that a little bit odd, but I did want to share this in case somebody else got this and is having problems. Um, 
and the only way I did it is, is actually switching. I don't know if you can see here on the side. I have multiple USB ports, and I just kept switching back and forth between them until it just decided it wanted to load it. And, and I've had this problem before with USB drivers before, so this isn't the first, and that's why um, if you have a USB device in general and you're having problems with it, try switching ports until it loads whatever driver it wants because each one of these USBs has its own port and so changing it will change the ports and, and trigger Windows to do some other interesting things. Windows sort of drives me nuts. I'm a little bit more of a Mac fanboy if you will just because of less headaches. However again just kind of want to share this if it, uh, uh, if you're running into this problem. Uh, I'm also planning on doing a, a, a complete thing on installing Octoprint. It's assuming I can get it to work now. I got Octoprint installed on here. It was really easy to install Octoprint. Really easy to connect and everything. However, um, it doesn't seem to be doing anything with the machine. So once I get this w working, look for a whole series on Octoprint on, on setting it up because I think this would be really cool. And I'm going to print a, a case for the, for the Pi. This is a Pi 2. And, um, you know have it run uh, this because actually what I want to do is see about having it run the Wanho um, in instead because I'm going to put the LCD on this but I wanted to set it up and play with it. If you've um, if you if you're using the Octoprint with the Wanho uh, i3 duplicator let me know down below I'd like to hear how you did it and how you, how you set it up and, and work it. Typically I just uh, slot in the SD card and print from that however I'd really like to get it to, to run from uh, Octoprint. Um, the other piece is these things. These are crap. Um, this this one here is, is not laser cut correct. It doesn't fit. Uh, I'm gonna make these some kind of novel thing to I don't know do what with, but uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna be used for the printer in the long term. And I didn't think they would because every time you go to move it, they fall out and everything else. So I am going to. Uh, print uh, version of feed for this and, and just stick them on there so they're stuck on there. Uh, actually what I might do is uh, I haven't figured out which um, LCD case so I, I've seen two so Chuck Hellebuck has one that mounts down here uh, let me pull back mounts down here and um, you know sits in like this I'm thinking about printing that one, or I've seen another one that actually mounts up top here, and then the cables kind of run around back into the bottom, and then it sits on feet. So I, I don't know, one or the other I'm going to print out for the LCD in the long run. So, hey, if you have an opinion, you've printed out one specifically for your use that you like, um, leave a comment below and let me know which one you printed out, and leave me the Thingiverse, and I'll take a look at them. And Because uh, when I do do the conversion to LCD and SD, uh, sort of like Chuck, I'll do I'll do a bit of a video on it for for the 1.5, and also share maybe some opinions and thoughts on on doing it. And um, again, that's where I'd like to hear some of your thoughts and opinions below. If you've added, uh, especially to the, to the 1.5, because again, I'm assuming that if I turn this to the side, uh, as I mentioned before, we have the ports. Over here, I believe these are the two ports for the LCD, so they should work. I'm just wondering if the cable, if, if they're, if the connectors are on backwards on this one or not, or if they fix the direction. Also, notice that I, I'm not sure if on the 1.0 it's the same. However, you have to have this right angle plug to get in here. There's just no physical way you can get in here with a, a straight plug unless you have obviously cut a hole in the side of the printer. So. Uh, just be a little bit forewarned at that. So, anyways, uh, hey, if this helped you out, and hopefully, uh, you know, sharing some of my challenges with the um, Fabricator Mini Tiny Boy, whatever you want to call it, helped you out. If it did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Even if it didn't, give it a thumbs up because I appreciate it. And um, keep watching for the next video because I, I really want to get the Octoprint thing working and I really want to do some segments on Octoprint because I think it's very cool. Uh, also going to be doing some stuff uh, with Octoprint, want to do some stuff with Octoprint time, time lapse, I should say. And I'm also going to be designing a new camera holder for the Wanho for time lapses. So anyways, subscribe, like, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.